My second choice is Anne Winder Boyle. This is my transition from mother and wife to artist. <laughs> I'd been intrigued by her little mixed media picture. Oh, this is quite interesting. Anne only graduated from art school in 2006, but her work's already been chosen for the summer show twice before. I didn't do particularly well at school, didn't go to university, but always regretted not following on with that, because that was I really loved it. And then in 2002, I went and did a degree. When I was in my final year at university, my mum died, and when we were going through our house, clearing it out, I found the books that had come from my father, and I remember reading them as a child, and these books were just beautiful, so I thought, well... You know, can I work with the books? I mean, this one, I think, is just amazing for me. Because all this decay, I think, is just beautiful. Anne layers together bits of the books, paints on an image, and then coats it all in wax. It's my skills as a housewife. <laughs> and I'm going to iron the wax on. At first glance, the work I picked out looks nostalgic, a bit quaint. But look again, and there's a bit more to it than that, as its title, The Dealer, suggests. This looks like this little boy is buying something. So it's a, just a, a social comment, really, with drugs and... You know, it's just a little darker and sinister. Even if I didn't get in, I would, I'd be there next year. I'd be submitting next year, because I love it. I love the whole process. It wouldn't put me off. <laughs> next up, professional photographer David Stewart. He submitted to the RA for the first time last year and got in. It's the old-fashioned system, so I go under the cloth to sort of frame up. <laughs> it's a photograph of a bloke in a wood. It was always intended, really, to be a, a sort of play on an ageing thing, really, with the, the guy with a slightly bald head and the sort of rings of the wood. When you see this in detail, when on, the, on the large print, you get the sort of fluffy hair, which is a bit like the trees here, and just this sort of general sort of decaying ageing thing, really. I don't think it's actually as clear as probably I thought it was. A lot of people don't seem to have got it at all. Including me, by the way. But for David, this is all about his own vision. It's totally your own thing and there's no interference from the outside. You can do exactly what you want. And it's um, very different to being sort of commissioned, which is always a very sort of big compromise, really, with a lot of people telling you what to do. Oh, that's nice. The last artist on my list is printmaker Adrian Bartlett, who made the etching of the burning tree. Oh, I like this. He's a summer exhibition veteran with an enviable record. Well, I've been submitting to the ERA since 1972. They have accepted work about 20 times and uh, possibly only two rejections, I think. Right, that's OK. <coughs> to make an etching, Adrian scratches his image onto a copper plate. Well... Uh, I spent a lot of time in Greece. We had an olive grove just over the road from the house where we lived. And one day I just walked out and found a tree on fire. He coats the plate with ink just before the arduous process of printing. OK, that's ready to go on the press. Yes, well, that means I don't have to go jogging. <laughs> Adrian's reasons for applying are very straightforward. It's a social event and... Uh, a bit of extra money, if, if anyone buys, which they generally do. I mean, it has to be said that the Royal Academy is a very good selling place. There we are. Four different artists, four different reasons for submitting to this year's summer exhibition. All of them now left waiting to hear who will make it into the final show. So there they are, the artists behind Andrew's favourite pictures. Stay tuned to find out what happens to them. Now, one of the innovations of this year's show is a room devoted to video art. It's taken a while. Video art's been around for a good four decades, but this is the first time it's been given a whole room to itself. As regular viewers of The Culture Show will know, one of our team is not a fan of video art at all. Our occasionally grumpy film critic, Mark Kermode. So who better to go and explore the video art room while it was being installed? For me, the cinema and the art gallery are worlds apart, and the difference between them is as clear as the difference between light and dark. Now, this is my space. This is where I feel at home, the cinema. You come here at an appointed time, you sit down, the lights go down, and you watch, in silence, the film play from beginning to end. 
Now, video art is something else altogether. To me, it feels like it belongs on the internet. I don't even know how you're supposed to view it in a gallery. Do you sit? Do you stand? Do you watch it all? I'm hoping that the man in charge of this room, Richard Wilson, can help. I'm just expecting it that people will just catch fleeting glimpses of it, which is so completely different to what you do with cinema. You know you've got your one hour, 22 minutes or whatever it is, and you're going to be completely manipulated. This room isn't quite doing that. I'm not manipulating them. Richard Wilson is known for making art which cuts into and plays around with the fabric of buildings. Here, he's decided to project the videos onto a section of broken wall. This is almost like an alien piece of architecture that's been clawed from somewhere else, yes, it looks albeit like a prop, been, and then dropped in. It looks like it's been broken off the side of another room and dropped absolutely, into this room. Absolutely, yeah, that's what I was hoping to do. So the idea there is to sort of suggest that what we have with video art is somehow breaking into the academy. It's like it's an outsider form. It's really saying, we're here, we're here to stay. You know, this could happen again in the future. Richard's favourite piece takes inspiration from one of the best-known films of all time. Classic sort of psycho movement, the knife on the floor, us as the audience watching something that's taking place, we've got to try and comprehend what that is. So the camera is outside of the world we're zoom, now zooming into. Hinting at the shower scene, yeah. beautiful moment. You notice there that the water is flowing up. That's yes, the first absolutely. suggestion that, that the camera's going backwards. Absolutely. And then this rather startling face of a woman with these sparklers. Something's happening, a celebration. It's a birthday cake and we get this very odd moment. And this, the story now starts to unravel itself. She's not coming to murder him, she's coming to cut the cake. Yeah. You know, and say, happy birthday, darling. But she's pushed him over. So it's a, kind of, it's a highly orchestrated yeah. cinematic gag. Yeah. yeah. It's somehow <clears throat> that sense that, that great cinema and great video art may be closer together than we'd like to admit. I like the way that you can learn from the master and then adapt it or... Um, you know, sort of take it for your own use. Yeah. And so you transcend the film itself, you take it onto the next stage. Or you can simply steal from cinema, like this piece we're watching now, whole chunks of which have just been lifted from David Cronenberg's sci-fi horror classic, Scanners. This is the kind of thing that would traditionally make me cross the appropriation of cinema. You take a film yeah. and you project it in an art gallery and say, I have made this my own. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going on in this? Because actually there's more than that happening. Uh, obviously, taken from Scanner, but it's acquired uh, one more actor than Cronenberg had, had thought about, yeah. and that is the artist Cat. And it, it, it's ambiguous for me, but I just see it as like that, the Cat becomes the all-powerful. In terms of what's happening in the film as it was, that's exactly what's happening. The other character is causing his yeah. head to explode yeah. by scanning him harder yeah. than he is being scanned. Yeah. But the gag is that it's a cat. <laughs> it's a cat doing it, yeah. <laughs> There was a, a delicious moment then when the cat is just licking itself while this other guy is sort of freaking. Uh, here's the head explosion now, possibly one of the most famous moments of uh, fantasy cinema. What's the difference between watching that Scanners cat film on YouTube, on the internet, and sitting here in these, you know, august surroundings, watching it on your project. How come one is art and the other yeah, one is people playing around on the internet? It's a very, very good question. I think it's art because I've said so, because it's in my <laughs> situation that I've given. You know? Do you think there is still that sense about video art? It's a little bit punky and seedy and not proper. I don't, I don't think so now. I think it depends on where it is seen. Um, obviously, for the Royal Academy, this is the first time one has to ask, why is it in 2009 yes. we get our first room that is taking a medium that's been around particularly with artists for 40 years? Mm -hmm. um, it's great that there is now a room given over. Obviously, we're pressurised because the sending is predominantly of other media, yeah. you know, painting and sculpture being the obvious, sure. obvious more sort of conservative ones. Um, but I'm rather hoping that this isn't um, 